Hey all, I'm Yi Ping, a PhD student working with Jose. I'm today here to present our paper, uh, Optimal Kernel Operator Learning Using a Multi-Level Machine Learning Algorithm. So our goal of this paper is to do operator learning. Operator learning is aims to learn a mapping from a function space to a function space. Different from the traditional machine learning, the input data and the output data here are all, are all infinite dimensional function space rather than finite dimensional vector space. So this is also known as the functional data analysis. In this paper, we aim to set up the optimal bound, the lower bound and the upper bound. We want them to match. The operator learning have many applications. Our work, uh, performs as a theoretical foundation to our project. For example, the operator learning can be used for solving a partial differential equation. A network can take to the right-hand side function as input and the solution of the PDE as the output. So these have many important applications. For example, we can the f it can be the reward function, and then the v the u is the value function. So we can input a reward function and output a value function. This can also be used for learning a mean field game. The Kuhlman operator is also an infinite dimensional operator and linear in the nature. So the Kuhlman operator is also a nature example of our theory. The Kuhlman operator is also part of user talk last year to do uh, important sampling. So why the infinite dimensional learning is hard? So infinite dimensional learning is actually learning an infinite dimensional matrix. The matrix may have O1 variance at each column so that the whole variance can be infinite. If you go to the literature, all the previous work in, the, in this literature always assumes that the output space, the choice of the output space covariance is uh, less than infinite. This means that it's finite variance and they have a equivalent result as the finite dimensional matrix. So in our work, we want to ask what if we remove this assumption? Well, this leads to some different uh, lower bound and different uh, machine learning algorithm. So here is our setting. We aim to learn a linear operator with bounded operator norm from sublet space H beta to another H, uh, sublet space H gamma. For here, the beta is the index of the sublet space of the, in, uh, uh, of the input space and gamma is the index of the uh, sublet space in output space. So we first write down our lower bound like this. The lower bound is very complicated, but let me uh, introduce it here to you. So our lower bound have a very good structure. It is like, it is a minimum of two rate. The first rate, it is only depend on the beta. And for the second rate here, it only depend on the gamma. So the rate here performs like a minimum over two rate. One rate only depends on the input space and another rate only depends on, 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 on the output space. And for the input space rate, you can see it is the same rate as a kernel regression. It is the same rate as the literature I have introduced that assumes finite variance in output space. So it is saying that this rate is almost the same rate as the finite dimensional learning problem. But we have another ratio that if you have an infinite dimensional problem, you may have a rate only depend on the infinite dimensional output. So why this happens? It looks magic. Can we explain it in a simple way? The answer is yes. So let's go back to our previous understanding. Learning an operator is learning an infinite dimensional matrix. The matrix have higher variance at the right, uh, at right upper side, it have higher variance, but you have smaller bias here. So you need to do a bias and a variance trade-off. So what is the optimal way to do the bias and a variance trade-off? So let's consider what if we need to achieve an n theta's power learning rate. Theta is the optimal rate we want to obtain. So we can first have the first line. This line is the bias counter. Uh, for this line, it means that all the area, the blue area uh, below the line, the bias of all elements here is larger than n theta's power. So if we so if we miss any of the information here, the bias is larger than n theta's power. We also have the quarter line of the variance quarter line that equals n theta's power. 
So the orange area that above the orange line, it means that if we learn any of the component here, the variance may larger than n theta's power. So then it means that, that we should learn every component in the blue area, but to learn none of the component in the orange area. So if it is feasible, the orange line should always dominate the blue line. So it have two cases here. The first case is that, is that the orange line and the blue line, they met each other at the y-axis, and the another is they met each other at the x-axis. So once you met them at x-axis, it is like below this figure here. So you can imagine the hardest vector, the hardest problem is the gray vector here. So the rate is determined by the input space because the output space is now a finite dimensional one. So similar thing also happens for the case as they met at the y-axis for in that case, the hardest problem is the uh, gray vector here. So the rate is only determined by the output space for input space is just a finite dimensional. So now we, we know that our lower bound is tight. So can we know something about the learning algorithm? So we, we discovered that for, for every well-known machine learning algorithm, for example, ridge regression and the PCA or PCA net, it is a machine learning algorithm that learns a rectangular in the figure. So if you have a single rectangular, you can't do the things that you don't touch the orange area, but you learn all everything in the blue area. So a single ridge regression or a single PCA net is not optimal. So our algorithm is to perform multiple level of training. So we have multiple uh, rectangular, it means uh, re multiple ridge regression with different regularizations. And we ensemble them together so that we can, so, so that we can cover all the blue area without touching the orange area. So in most of the cases that uh, early low and low level is needed. But in, uh, so, so our idea here is actually very, very similar to the multi-level Monte Carlo. For that, uh, you, you can reduce the bias while control the variance at the next level. So, uh, but in the worst cases, it is like if the two lines coincide, so we don't have the uh, white area here for us to do this zigzag uh, approximation. But our answer is yes, you can still use the multi-level training, but the drawback is you will use on low end level. So this is because we only care about the rate respected to n. So every time we can have a constant time shrink of the rectangular size, so that only low end level is needed. Our paper have submitted to iClear 2023, and it ranked top two over all the 4,000 papers after the rebuttal. So the iClear is the top uh, venue of machine learning conference, and we, we are ranked the top two. Thank you for listening.